it's everywhere. Yeah, um, everywhere. And yeah. Uh, nobody seems to know what to do about it. For me to be able to say to someone as to why not to take it, I want to know what I'm saying. Even if you removed all of the herbal cannabis from the market, there would still be hundreds, if not thousands, of molecules out there which mimic the effects of cannabis. There are all these chemicals which bind together, sort of that form a sort of shape like this. But then they've each got kind of like tails. Um, it's like the molecular structure of it. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Spray, Spray it yeah. with deodorant mm. and anything. Yeah. And smoke it. Yeah. And you'll yeah. get the high from the deodorant spray. That's right. You're only going to stop doing something if you don't like it or if you had enough of it or didn't agree with you. you The effect that they get, they like, and they think it's cheaper than when they're going down the normal marijuana route. This particular class of drug, I think, is particularly important because of, of the harms that they can cause to people that take. They're not a Diet Coke version of drugs. I smoke uh, Gold Magic and I smoke Warrior and I smoke other names, yeah? And I just take the bath salt, yeah? Like a cocaine, yeah? But I notice I'm not sleeping three, four nights. Three, four nights, I can't get to sleep. And my tongue is cutting up inside my tongue, all cut up. Okay. Slashed up like that, yeah? Yeah. Go, what, what is that one? That side effects from the from the herbal high, yeah? Yeah. Side effects. Okay. Yeah. It destroyed my life, you know what I mean? No money. Yeah. No, no even toothbrush in, in my room, nothing, yeah? I spend all my money, yeah? I get ben benefits, yeah? And I spend all of it in drugs, yeah? Okay. The synthetic substances is that many of them are more potent than cannabis itself. And so you start seeing effects that you know, you literally couldn't smoke enough cannabis to actually produce the effects. What I'm seeing that it's doing to enough people out there, because even men that I know, like I, I can see the soldiers, I swear some of them are going a bit it's destroying them, man. It's, it's going a bit funny, them. and yes, that, you know yes, what I mean? Yes, like, there's no doubt yeah, like, about it. Like a, like a tramp, I look in the road, yeah, yeah. And I, like a bag of money, yeah, and my family, they notice here. Yeah, my relative, yeah, they notice I'm taking drugs, yeah, and yeah. they start avoiding me, yeah? Yeah. I spent eight years in the hospital, eight years. That's what that, 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 that's addressing to you. If you're doing it at your own risk. You exaggerate it, yeah, you get bad consequences. Bad consequences, you mm. exaggerate it, yeah. There's a generation of children who their first exposure to drugs at the legal highs. So 10 or 20 years ago, these were children who were smoking cannabis. And now they're smoking spice and black mamba and all the other variations on it. One of the things that I think that I'm, I'm most concerned about and why I'm really pleased you guys are doing this project is the physical health stuff. I don't know if you've seen it. Mm -hmm. People okay. vomiting, like they'll, they'll smoke it and they'll just throw up everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's not healthy to be vomiting. Yes, yes, of course, this is my point. Well, this is my point. It's, it's really not good for you. And deteriorating. The other thing that, that, that I'm really concerned about is I've worked with a couple of people who when they smoked it, their heart rate has gone up to 232 beats a minute. Wow. Now, anything over 100 is pretty dangerous. So no. every time they do it, that is, the, that is they're taking a chance, yeah? yeah. Like Russian roulette. Yeah, I think that's a great way of describing it. How long have you been out of hospital now? 16 months. Good man. January, January 2014. January 2014, I left the hospital. So now is to this year, January, that's one year. You can have problems with your heart and with your bodily organs, and it may be an emergency, so you should seek help if you've got any concerns. In terms of dying from it, the drug classes that are most of worry are the depressants. 
So they're called depressants because they depress down bodily function. But it's usually the combination of substances that are particularly dangerous. If you wash your diazepam down with half a bottle of vodka, the chances are you'll die. And also, that makes life very difficult for the clinician who's trying to help the patient because they're not just dealing with a single substance. I smoked it, yeah, my head spinning in the shower room, yeah. I hate the, I hate the sink, I hate the shower, okay. I hate the heater, I hate the door. I was spinning like that, yeah, okay. in the shower room. Oh, 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 oh. The person has to realise that this is not good. You have to want to stop. The name Legal High, it's, it's a dreadful name. So the official name is Novel Psychoactive Substance. Somehow that's not catching on and people stick with legal highs and you can see why. And it can infer that it's safer. To me, legal high sounds like Diet Coke. You've got drugs and you've got legal highs. And there was a concern that people didn't understand they could cause harm, that by not banning them, we were sending out a message that they're okay. If you think about one of the reasons lots of people were in favor of prohibition, it was the anxiety of particularly young people going into head shops. If you no longer have head shops, you have moved the problem 200 yards up the road and round the corner where a child now needs to go to meet a dealer who's going to arrive in a motorbike. And I don't think that's progress. You know, I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't used it, but I've seen the effects of it by other people using it around me. Uh, the effects is not what I'm, I'm accustomed to. I think the, so to start off with is, is to purchase it Sample it, see, yeah. the, see the effects that it has. Yeah, and I then mean, speak. All of us, and, and, and then well, all give our opinions of, of, of what it done to us. Speak for yourselves. So well, I'd you rather, don't have to. I'd rather sit there and study the effects you, of it. Yeah, have yeah, to. you don't have to. You don't have to. That's the last thing. That's the last thing there. This is the last thing that I'm, I'm looking to do. Right, that, that guy is fitting out. That's look, right. Look, look. That could have been the eleventh floor. <laughs> He's going through the window. It's not what I thought it was, legal cannabis. It's it's a compound that is highly toxic. They don't even know what's in it. On it it said not fit for human consumption. It said it on the back. Yeah. Yeah. It says it on the back and people are still buying it. Yeah. Smoking it and reacting like that. Look at the fella that just went out the window. <laughs> yeah, that could have been the tenth floor. He was going out that window. It doesn't matter if it was ground floor. What could have been fifteen floors up? He was going through that window. Yeah. No, this is this is it's, serious. It's serious. It's serious. It's serious. It's, it's, serious. it's, it's, serious. it's, it's not something I would uh, jump to to sample. Mm. I didn't really thought it was a a legal high mm. by whatever they. Yeah, but you thought it was a lot milder than what you reacted. No, it's, and imagine it's a chemical. Yeah. It makes you psychotic. Yeah, it makes you crazy. It's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Some people, is, I used to know people that said, "Ah, uh, one spliff you won't make me feel buzz. Two spliff you make me feel buzz." Yeah. What the hell, high. Yeah. You yeah. feel buzz quickly. Yeah. Yeah. You feel strong effect. Yeah. yeah. And you, you get agitated and you get, you get, you get strange, you know? Yeah. You, you do, you do, you do. It makes you feel like that, yeah? yeah? If a child takes a drug, their body and their brain is still developing. And not only can it have an acute effect on them here and now, we don't know if that will affect the development of their brain. As a psychiatrist working in mental health, the class that worries me in that regard are the cannabinoids, the SCRAS. Think about yourself of how you elevated from yeah, yeah from a cigarette. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's going to escalate. Yeah, yeah. I think that's one of the problems when it comes to drugs. Yeah, you know, we take it maybe even just for curiosity. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Some people will like it, some don't. But yeah, people do like it. A lot of them abuse it. Yeah, of and course. You, you know, no matter what your parents tell you or how you may try to discipline them. You know, for them to do it, you know, once you're on that path, you're going to see where it leads, you know. In mental health, I see and worry a lot about the SCRAS, the cannabinoids. In A&E, they worry a lot about 
the dissociatives. Because pe pe people are coming in, they're collapsing, they're having problems with their bowels, with their bladder, with their kidneys. Some people are having significant physical health problems. They take a blood sample and the normal test that would allow them to say, yes, this person has taken cannabis, are negative. And it may be that one of the new substances is already on the battery of tests that they have access to, but it's more likely that this will be a completely new substance, there won't be a test for it. And so it could be weeks before you get a forensic report saying it was substance X that caused the problem. And so for the person trying to treat the patient, it means they're just left with symptomatic remedies. There's nothing specific they can do. It might not cause you harm. Lots of people take drugs and lots of people get through it. But you need to give a nuanced argument. It's not the same to smoke cannabis as it is to inject heroin. And it's the same with the NPS. There are variations of harm. So I think, I think education is the way forward for people about saying, well, look, if you're going to do it, you need to be aware of the risks. Don't think it's not going to happen. It's happening. Yeah. 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 So we want to think that it's not going to happen, that you need to be informed. Yeah? It's happening. Yeah? And the end result is going to be you can't get rid of it. You're never going to get rid of it, yeah? You're going you're gonna to have to design a structure of how to control it. And controlling it's going to come from, uh, as you say, informed choices. The drugs world has changed. One of the schemes that's being piloted at the moment is to divert people not into the criminal justice system, but into a treatment regime. And quite a number of people who've gone to that initial awareness session have carried on in treatment. And, and I think that sort of approach, rather than fining people or sending them to prison, has to be a, a, you know, a better approach. They're going to come up with excuses as to why they want to use it, but you're going to have to come up with facts as to why not to use it. And the, the, the metaphor I sometimes give to people when I have pessimistic moments is a slow motion tidal wave coming towards us. I, I see it sometimes in my head, 10 years from now, a generation of people coming into mental health services who've had a decade taking scras and are coming in with significant psychological problems.